Introducing dependencies. A task is either a predecessor or a successor. This means that a task either comes before or after another task. Many times, a successor task will not start until the predecessor task finishes. In other words, task B will not start until task A finishes. This means they have a timing relationship. When two tasks have a timing relationship, they are a predecessor successor pair. The predecessor's task schedule will have an effect on the successor's task schedule, especially if you are using the auto schedule relationship. A dependency in project is defined as a timing relationship between two tasks in a project, or tasks that are a predecessor successor pair. These two tasks depend on each other. In project 2016, you create a dependency link. This link will cause a task to either occur before or after another task, or to begin or end during the duration of another task. In other words, it gives them a timing relationship. Whenever you create a dependency, it is a finish to start relationship by default. This means one task must finish before another begins. If you want that type of dependency, then your life just got a whole lot easier. If it's not the type that you want, after you create the dependency link, you can edit it to change the type or build in lag or lead time, or essentially time in between the pair of tasks. Let's learn how to create a finish to start dependency. First, let's enter the duration for some of these tasks here. Make sure you're in Gantt chart view, which we are here, and that the two tasks you want to link are both visible. Now, do a control click and drag the predecessor's taskbar, which is the blue bar here, to the successor's taskbar. When you do, you will see a line drawn and a chain link symbol like this. You'll also see a little box notifying you of the finish to start link that you've created, as you can see here. Let go of your mouse button and you should see a new column added. If this hasn't happened, it could be because your tasks are manually scheduled. So what we're going to do is set all of our tasks to auto schedule. Now let's try that again. So hold the control button and then click on the blue bar of the first task and then drag it down to the second task. When you release the mouse button, the tasks should be linked and a new column called predecessor should be displayed. If it doesn't appear, you can do this manually. In the predecessors column for the successor task, enter in the task ID for the predecessor task. In this case, we want task four to come after task three. So if I type in task 3 and press enter, the two tasks will then be linked. There is also an arrow showing the relationship between the tasks in the chart area of the Gantt chart view. You can also create dependencies in the task information dialog box, or use this box to modify a relationship between tasks. To do this, double click the name of the successor task so the dialog box appears. Our successor task is Discover Need to Know Features in 2016. Click on the Predecessors tab here. In the ID field, you can type in the ID number for the predecessor task. In this case, we're going to make the predecessor task for this task review what's new in Project 2016. This is task 3, which is ID number 3. The task name and the default finish start dependency type are entered for you automatically. Click the type field and click on the arrows to view dependency types. Then click on the appropriate dependency. The dependency types are finish to start. We already covered this dependency. It's the easiest one to work with. Start to start. The start of one task also determines the start of another task. Finish to finish. The finish of one task determines the finish of another. And start to finish. This relationship means that the start of one task determines the finish of another. Click OK when you've selected the appropriate dependency. Lag time occurs when you add time to either the start or the finish of a predecessor task. This causes a gap in timing. 
Lead time, on the other hand, is when you subtract time from either the start or the finish of the predecessor task. This causes an overlap between the two tasks. To set lag or lead time, click the name of a task to open the Task Information dialog box. Then click on the Predecessors tab. The field where you set lag or lead is in the lag column, which is shown here on the right. This is located to the right of the dependency type column that we learned about earlier. To add lag, click up the arrows to a positive number. Or for lead time, decrease the number to a negative number. Remember, days are the default timing. You can change this to accommodate your timings. Linking tasks is defined as establishing a connection between tasks in separate schedules so that the task changes in the first schedule are reflected in the second. It is also to establish dependencies between project tasks. In this section, we are going to learn how to link to external tasks, such as those within another project. When you insert a hyperlink into your project, you create a task that can be used to represent the timing and or costs of another project or subproject in your plan. That said, you have to bring over timing and cost information yourself. It cannot be linked in from another project. To insert a hyperlink, select a blank cell in the task name column where you want the link to appear. Right click and choose hyperlink from the context menu. You'll then see the insert hyperlink dialog box. Type a name for the hyperlink in the text to display box. Next, select the appropriate file or web page, such as another project file. Then click on OK. A hyperlink symbol will now appear in the indicator field in the Gantt chart view. Just click on the symbol to open up your link. The task inspector is a feature that lets you know what is driving the timing of your tasks. Since the timing of your tasks is affected by certain conditions, Task Driver will help you recognise these conditions. It's kind of like when you play a game of golf. Several conditions can affect your game such as the weather, your mood, and even your health at the time. The conditions that affect timing of your project can include the actual start date or assignments. This happens when you have entered a start date for a task, or you have assigned a resource to a task and the resource is not yet available. Constraints. This condition can happen when you apply a constraint to a task that won't allow it to start until a certain date. And dependency relationships. A predecessor task can cause a change to a task's timing. To view the task driver information, go to the task tab, then click the drop down arrow beside the inspect button. Select the task that you want to use for the task inspector. Then click on the drop down under the inspect button here. We're going to choose Inspect Task. The Task Inspector opens on the left side of the window for the task we selected. With the Task Inspector open, we can click on other tasks to inspect them. Whereas the Task Inspector lets you see your task drivers in a table format, Task Path will show you the task drivers by highlighting them in the Gantt chart. To see your task paths, go to the Gantt chart view if you're not already there. Go to the Format tab, and then click the downward arrow on the Task Path button. Select the task path that you want to see from the drop-down menu. We're going to choose Predecessors. In this case there are none, so let's select the task here with the predecessor. You can see the predecessor task here has been highlighted in yellow, 